Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be doing a couple things. First off, we're going to be doing a debug update. We're going to have the ability to draw debug spheres as well as debug lines in game. Now, we also are going to be using that in the beginnings of a script for limb placement in world. So we're going to get to all of that, though this video is going to be a little bit longer. So I'm going to put a timestamp. If you want to skip the debug portion, you can just download that and use it as is. But for the rest of you, let's go ahead and get started with the debugging. So first off, we're going to go ahead and create a script inside of the helpers folder underneath code. And we're just going to call this debug extensions. So we're going to go ahead and open up debug extensions and we're going to do a couple things. First off, we're going to just delete the ready and process because we're going to be calling these functions from elsewhere. So let's go ahead and create a new class name and we're going to call this debug extensions. You could call this whatever you like, so long as you're able to remember it when it comes to actually calling it in your classes. So let's go ahead and create a new static function. We're going to call this one draw point. Now we're doing a couple things here. So we have an origin node that is the node that we're actually going to be drawing this point from. We're going to just use this to access the tree that we're currently in. And we also have a position for the location of the point, as well as a duration, a color, and a size, which we're defaulting to 0.5. So let's go ahead and do a couple things. First off, we're going to create a couple variables, the first one being a a mesh instance of type mesh instance 3d this was actually going to be spawned into the world then we're going to create a sphere mesh which is just going to be of type sphere mesh which is what tells the mesh instance 3d what to draw next up we are going to create a standard material you could use a shader here but for the time being a standard material is going to work just fine so let's go ahead and set the mesh to the sphere mesh and then we're also going to go ahead and set the shadows to not cast this is just going to help in the debug state now also we're going to set the position to the position that has been passed into the function and we're going to set the sphere mesh dot radius to size divided by two now the reason why we do this is because we also have to set the height if we don't we're going to end up with an ellipsoid and the height is twice what the radius is it's more like a diameter so we're just going to leave that we're also going to set the sphere mesh dot material to what our material was now we do need to set some variables on the material so we're going to go ahead and set the shading mode to shading mode unshaded this is just going to keep it in a very debug state that way we don't accidentally leave leave some of this in here when we get into the final build of the game. Now we're going to go ahead and set the albedo color to whatever the color is we pa were passed in. And finally, we're going to go ahead and add that to the root underneath the tree. So we're just going to call the origin node.gettree.root.addChild mesh instance. Now we do need to handle the duration. So what we're going to do is set an if statement to if duration does not equal zero. And then we're just going to create a new timer and we're going to await that timer. So we're going to call origin node.gettree.create timer duration and then dot timeout. And you can use the await function like this. This is how we do it in Godot 4. It's a little bit different than Godot 3, but I genuinely very much like the way this works now. So now that we can go ahead and just await that, we can then queue free the mesh instance and this will all work just fine. Now, besides this, we do want to go ahead and create another one of these static functions. I'm going to create one for lines. Now, I'm not going to go over every bit of this it's pretty much the same but we did change up the sphere mesh for what is called an immediate mesh which allows us to actually construct a mesh on the fly so in this case i used primitive lines and i used an origin and destination as opposed to just a single location and then i just add some vertices and then i end it and i pass in everything else exactly the same as it was so that's all we really need to do so let's go ahead and test that so we're going to go over to basic enemy navigation and let's use the debug extensions dot draw point so when you pass the draw point you do need to pass in the node that is drawing it as well as a position so let's get the global position and we're going to add to it a vector three with two in the y-axis this is just to bounce it up so that we can notice it easier next up we're going to set the duration as just delta the color we're just going to set it as a color with one in the red variable that way we'll have a red sphere and let's set the size to something like 0.5 now let's go ahead and do this again for draw debug line or build debug line. We're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to draw it from the global position and we're going to draw it to the player target global position. We'll just have to remove the size and that should be it. So let's go ahead and save that and let's see what that looks like in game. Now, as you can see, there's a red debug sphere drawing above the AI as well as a line drawing to the player from the AI. This looks good. We can go ahead and use this in our code. So let's remove that from the AI and we're just going to save that and let's go ahead and create the limb placement code. 
and we're just going to go ahead and create a script called limb placement controller.gd inside of the enemies folder. So before we go ahead and do that code, let's create a couple nodes underneath enemy test. The first one is just going to be of type node, and we're just going to rename that limb placement controller. And let's go ahead and create another node, which is going to be of type raycast 3D, and we're just going to name that limb placement raycast. All right, and that should do just fine. Let's go ahead and drag in the limb placement controller and we can go ahead and hop into that code and get started. So first off, let's create a couple variables. First, we're going to have a variable for the enemy body. This is just going to be the parent of the limb body controller, the limb placement controller. So next up, we're also going to need a reference to that Raycast 3D, which we're just going to call limb Raycast. And we are also going to need a body length, which is just going to be how far forward and backwards the hands and legs will be separated from one another. And we need the body width as well for the same reason, but sideways. And then we're going to have target offset down. Now this is going to be the total length of the arms. Later on, I may have to change this based off of what I end up actually making with the model as I do want the arms and legs to be rather long, but I don't know if I'll have them that long. So we'll see how it goes. Finally, we are also going to have to have something called an enum. So for those of you that don't know, enums are basically just an integer that are related to a name of something, a string. So left hand being zero, right hand being one, so on and so forth. So we can actually loop through this and you'll see that in just a second. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and create a variable for the velocity. So we're gonna be storing this velocity and coming back around to it later. So we're just going to leave this as vector3.forward and that's going to be the default velocity. This way the arms and legs aren't all bunched up when the character is first spawned. So let's go ahead and jump into the ready function here. First off, we're going to set the limb raycast target position to the target offset down in its forward axis. This is just going to make sure that the raycast is only ever looking as far as an arm is capable of reaching. Next up, we're going to remove the process function and instead we're going to have physics process. Within the physics process, let's go ahead and loop through all of the limb references and you can do that very simply with just a for loop here. And then we're going to need to call a function that doesn't actually exist called get target limb position. So let's go ahead and create that function. And inside of the parameters, we are going to go ahead and set up the target limb parameter and it's going to be of type limb reference. And for the time being, we're going to create a couple variables and just pass them back immediately so that we can use them up here in the physics process. So the first variable is going to be a target position, and we're just going to default that to the enemy body global position. The next one is going to be a Boolean that says whether we hit a surface or not. And so we're just going to call this one hit surface, and let's just default that to equal false. Now what we're going to return is something a little bit different. We're going to return a dictionary, and inside this dictionary, we're going to have two variables. The first one is going to be called position, and it'll be the variable's value will be target position. And the next one is going to be called hit surface. And of course, the variable value will be hit surface. Now, the reason why we do this is because we can then access them directly in that data object that has been returned. So when we do the debug extensions dot draw point, we can go ahead and just reference it as target data dot position and target data dot hit surface. Now, in order to draw this point, first we pass in ourself, obviously, then we pass in the target position. So that's wherever the limb ends up being or the desired location of the limb ends up being. We're gonna just pass in the delta value that way we don't keep anything left over from old data. And we're going to pass it the color green, that's one in the green variable, if the target data dot hit surface equals true, else we're going to pass in red. Now, just after that, we're going to set up a size and I'm just gonna put it to 0.3, a third of a meter is uh, more than enough for the size of the sphere. Now, let's go ahead and hop into this function here. We need to do a couple things. First off, let's check to see if the body's dot linear velocity, so the enemy body dot linear velocity dot length is greater than 0.5. This just means that the AI is moving around to at least somewhat of a degree. And if so, let's go ahead and set the last velocity to equal that velocity dot normalized. This way we don't rotate the AI unless it is doing a drastic movement or at least some larger movement. That way the AI is actually capable of side strafing. Later on, we're probably gonna change this up a little bit, but for the time being, this will be great for just debugging. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and set the target position to plus equal last velocity. That's our current velocity vector. That's the direction we're oriented. And we're gonna multiply that by body length 
divided by two, so that gets us halfway in front or behind. And then in order to get the behind vector, what we're going to do is multiply that by negative one if the target limb equals left foot or right foot. That way, if it's either foot, it will be putting it behind the vector. And if else, it's going to multiply it by one, which will just leave it alone, which is in front of the vector. This way we get our feet and our hands forward and backwards proper. So let's go ahead and set the limb raycast.global position equal to the target position. Now we aren't actually going to offset the limb raycast off to the left or right based off the shoulders. We want it in the center of where the shoulders should be or in the center of where the hips should be. That way that the raycast will be angling outwards. That way we can actually put arms and legs on the edge of walls or on other AI that are right next to us and things like that. So for the time being, that should work just fine. Let's go ahead and set the target position plus equal to the last velocity dot cross with vector 3 dot up. So this functions under the left hand rule and you can Google it if you want any more information on it. But basically what it means is that by crossing it with vector 3 dot up, we're able to get the perpendicular angle, which in this case is pointed to the right of the character. So then we'll just multiply it by half of body width, again, just like we're doing the body length, but then we multiply it by negative one if the target limb is left hand or left foot. That way, if it's on the left hemisphere of the character, we go ahead and multiply it by negative one to get that other side. Otherwise, we just multiply it by one and leave it alone. So next up, we'll go ahead and set the target position dot Y equals negative target offset down. So that's gonna get us down below us, the full extent of what the arm is capable of reaching. And next, we go ahead and rotate that limb raycast to look at the target position. Now, like I said in previous videos, look at is a little bit finicky if you don't pass it an up vector that is correct. So we're gonna go ahead and pass it vector three dot back if the absolute value of target position subtracting limb raycast dot global position dot y is greater than 0.99. That means if it's directly up or down, we wanna make sure that up vector in that look at function is not up or down, it's off to the side. Otherwise, we're just gonna give it the vector three dot up. This makes sure that we don't get any errors with that look at function. Now we can go ahead and force the raycast. If you don't do this, the raycast may not update. It's a little bit finicky. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. And it just results in inconsistent results. So next up, we can go ahead and set that hit surface to limb raycast dot is colliding. And finally, we can say if hit surface, then let's go ahead and set the target position equals the get collision point from the raycast. So that'll go ahead and make sure that the hand or the foot is placed on the ground properly. Each one is oriented towards its various limb based off of the limb reference ENA. And that looks pretty good. It should work just fine. Let's go ahead and hop into the scene and let's set up some of those variables. And so first off, we're just going to set the enemy body to enemy test. And let's also set up that raycast to the limb placement raycast. We don't have to change anything else. Like I said, I may have to change it later, but for the time being, this should work just fine. So let's go ahead and hit play and see what we got. And as you can see, it works just fine. So if we move them over towards the rocks, you can see as it bounces, the balls become red as it is no longer touching the ground. And later on, we're actually gonna apply some physics or something to the hand to make sure that they bounce upwards properly and like wave around as the thing moves through the air. But for the time being, this should work just fine. So we're gonna leave it here. Thank you all for watching. Next week, we're going to be going into how to actually make some hand movements. So these are the objectives of where the hands and legs should be pointed. and next up we're going to actually be making the real location of where the hands and legs are and we're going to be using bezier curves to move between those locations and the next target location and also some alternating code to make sure that we don't move one hand a bunch and the other hand stay behind we get make sure we rotate through all the limbs so we'll get to all of that thank you all for watching hope you all have a wonderful week and we'll see you all back here next week for the next tutorial